Hello everyone, welcome to Piss. A <laughs> wonderful name, isn't it? An adventure game created by Ben Chandler, who's probably, I guess, best known for doing the art behind the Blackwell series, and let's see, he did Eternally Us. He's involved in a new game from Alcave Games, who are the developers of Richard and Alice, and he's made a bunch of other stuff. He's very active in the adventure game community. And this is a game created, created entirely by him. It's about a woman with a drinking problem. So, let's go. Let's enter the world of piss. Ugh, morning. There's nothing worse than waking up from the same bad dreams as ever, watching the last of your money pour out of you in a yellow stream and remembering that the only reason you got to sleep at all last night was the amount you drank beforehand. That reminds me, I'm thirsty. Ah. This lemonade is really good. Mmm. I'm just kidding. It's water. But I slept. And even... Wait, even it? If I got wo... Oh, I think it's supposed to be if. Uh, even if I got woken up by the same dreams as ever, that's more than I can say for the three nights beforehand. Plus, I finished the first job I've had in months yesterday, and I'm due to be paid today. Sweet! Well, I'm gonna take that money and spend it on... Booze. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna spend it on booze. It was a tough job, but the pay was more than enough to make up for it. More money than I can remember having. Enough to keep me happily drunk for at least a couple of months. Just what I need. Wow, what a piss. How much did I drink last night? I feel good, though. It could turn out to be a good day. Been a while since I can remember having one. To be fair, it's been a while since I remember pretty much anything. With a drinking habit like mine, the past was a place I don't recall ever being to. But without a drinking habit like mine, I simply couldn't get to sleep. I've spent countless nights laying awake, staring at the darkness, haunted by something I don't even recall doing. And when I can afford and when I can afford the drink and can finally sleep, the same dream wakes me sweating and terrified every time. Dreams of happy people, green grass, blue skies, children playing happily in the warm sun, dreams of young lovers tangled in each other's arms, of old lovers looking fondly back over all the times they've shared. I have no idea why I keep having the same dream or why it leaves me shivering in fear every time it wakes me. Wait a minute, she... That sounds like a happy dream. But it leaves her shivering in fear every time it wakes her? That sounds like a wonderful dream, but it sounds like it's a nightmare to her. Hmm. I just wish it would go away. But today will be a good day. I deserve at least one of those by now. Oh wow, look at that. Kamiya is actually a really beautiful city. I almost forget that some days. I might have the chance to actually enjoy the city today. Moira, uh, hi. <laughs> Jerol, I was wondering when you'd show up. Have you got my mu- Hang on a minute. What's going on? You did very well, Moira, and I must thank you once more for everything you've done. Tell me what's going on. I am dead, just as I knew I would be. Dead? I took, a, I took care of everything you told me to do. It was only a matter of time before they got me. You were a distraction, a very useful one. But I knew they would get me eventually. And my pay? I am sorry, but the ferryman requires two gold coins and I do not fancy swimming the sticks. As much as you have earned your pay, I am sorry to say I must take it with me to my grave. You bastard! You knew this would happen. It was necessary to deceive you in order to ensure my well-being in the afterlife. Goodbye, Moira, and thank you. For everything. 
2,000 copper coins he promised me. Weeks of following leads, tracking people through the night, taking them out one by one until every name was crossed off my list. All gone just so that a parasite like him was guaranteed a safe spot in the afterlife. Wait, wait a minute, you... You can buy yourself a safe spot in the afterlife? Like, you just pay to rent a, a, a slot and you get to stay there? Happily ever after? <laughs> that sounds nice. Where do I sign up? Drawl, you selfish bastard. I'll get my money out of you, even if I have to dig you up and steal the gold coins from your corpse myself. Something tells me that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. Actually, that's not a bad idea. Hmm. If Drahal had only just died, his body would still be interred at the mortuary. Okay. Wait a minute. I just thought this was another misspell. It looks like it says it. I think that's actually just what the F looks like. Hold on, is there another F in here? Just died, his body would still be interred at the mort... No, there's no other Fs. I think that's an F. But if you notice, like, the top thing that makes it look like an F is, like, a couple of just slightly darker pixels. It looks like a T. Hmm. Anyway, I guess I'm going to the mortuary. Mortuary. It's a weird word. Mortuary. I could go there and steal the coins from his corpse. Alright, is there an F here? I'm looking for an F. Yep, there it is. Okay, that is an F. It just looks like a T. It was considered absolutely foolish to do such a thing by most. A couple of gold coins in exchange for being constantly hunted by an angry spirit for the rest of your life wasn't a fair trade. But those two gold copper coins are worth about the same as the 2,000 coppers he promised me. I'm owed that money. It belongs to me. To hell with superstition. I'm going to the mortuary. It's payday. <laughs> okay. Uh, I can save it, right? Yeah. Okay. As usual, this game has... I mean, as usual with Ben Chandler games, it has extraordinary art. He is ridiculously good at pixel art. Beautiful. Alright, let's take a look at everything here. Window. I think it's left to examine, or is it right? Wait, right to examine? Left to use? It'd be useful exit if I need to escape in a hurry. Okay, left to use, right to examine. For now, I'll just use the stairs down. Okay. Let's take a look out the window at the city of... What was it? Kamiya? Yeah. The city of Kamiya. The smell coming in through the window from the street below is even worse than the stench in this room, and that's no trivial thing to overpower. I've lived here most of my life. The bits I can remember, anyway. Aside from the occasional trip abroad to fulfill a contract, I rarely have any cause to travel outside the city walls. It's a city built on commerce, and that means everything is for sale, and everything has a price. People like me will always have work in a town like this. Alright, given that she was talking about crossing people off of a list and taking them out one by one, I assume she's a mercenary, basically? The journal, table, bottles... Oh, can you press space to highlight everything? Nope. Alright, bottles. These bottles are all empty. No wonder I woke up with a mouth that tasted like... vote piss and a headache the size of a continent. I must have drunk enough last night to paralyze a barbarian. What the heck's a vote? Still, it meant that I managed to get a few hours sleep. That's rare enough to be considered a luxury these days. Can I pick it up? These are all empty, but there's a bottle cap left here. Might take it. If I see Thoriad, I'll give it to him for his collection. Oh, I guess he's got a bottle cap collection. Can I pick up more? Nope. Alright, journal. My journal. I never use the damn thing anymore. The only purpose it serves is to remind me of who I am on the days I've managed to wipe my memory out completely. <laughs> wow. I've poured so many different types of toxic shit into my guts to try and stop the nightmares that I can hardly remember a thing anymore. I can't even remember what started the nightmares. Although, according to this journal, the reason I started drinking was to forget that. Nice to know my plan wasn't a complete failure, I suppose. Date unknown. I hate everything and almost everyone. 
really want to go and get drunk. Tired and annoyed. There, updated my journal. <laughs> Lovely. Well, obviously the biggest question at the moment is, what the hell is she... What is she trying to forget? Hmm, jar. It's food for the bioluminescent organisms in our lights. If you don't feed them, they don't glow. Holy crap! That's so cool, so they're like organic lights. Bioluminescent organisms that you have to feed. That's really cool. Can I take it? Not sure what this is doing on the floor. Oh, where's my... Oh, here's my inventory. Alright, well, let's see if the light needs feeding. The light is always glowing. It's filled with tiny bioluminescent organisms, and the only way to make sh to make the glow go away is to cover up the light with a cloth or let them die. Hmm. I like the color, so I let them glow away happily. Let's see if I can feed them. The light is working fine. No need to do that. Okay. Fair enough. Sword. Looks... exotic. That's Keith, my sword. He was named Keith by the last person who owned him. It suited him too much for me to change it. I hardly take him out of the house anymore. I get little enough work as it is, and most of it is stuff that any weakling could punch or headbutt their way through. I don't mind so long as I get enough coin to afford my booze, and I only ever buy the cheapest, strongest, brewed-in-a-bathtub drink these days. Lately, I haven't even managed to afford much of that. Hmm. I won't be needing my sword today. Haven't needed it for a long time, really. I hardly even fight anymore. Stove. And a kettle. Maybe I can brew some tea. <laughs> yeah, right, like she actually has tea. My stove warms my place in the winter and is good for cooking food on when I can be bothered to think about eating. Can I use it? The stove is burning fine already. I put a new log on as soon as I got up. Alright, kettle. My kettle. Hot water is always useful. Not really thirsty right now. Apparently I didn't finish drinking at all last night. Oh, well let's finish the job. I guess. Still full. I guess I passed out before I managed to get it to get to this one last night. Eh, I'm not gonna drink it. Actually, I don't even know if I can. Can I use items on myself? No, I don't think I can. Uh, Carleb's goat wine. It really does taste like a goat has pissed down your throat when you wake up the next day. Ew. You get new descriptions when you look at it in your inventory? No, that's not, that one's not new. God knows I've seen enough of these bottle caps to last me a lifetime. If these ever become currency, I'll have enough laying around my place to make me rich. Well, you might enjoy the Fallout universe, Moira. Wood. My firewood. Some woodcutter. Uh, name... What does that say? Kelthan? That is an L. Or, oh, shit. Uh, apparently I did some favor for him several years ago, and he feels obliged to keep me well stocked. I have no idea what I did for him. My journal says it was messy. I certainly don't regret it. Oh, is that her bed? Oh, this is her entire apartment, isn't it? This one room. Wow. The pile of rags that passes for my bed these days. I sold my bed long ago, and I hardly sleep anymore anyway. This works well enough for the nights that I can get a few hours rest. Can't sleep now, haven't had enough to drink. <laughs> of course. Alright, anything else in here? Journal, bottle, sword, window... No, that's it. <sighs> Alright, let's go to the mortuary. Oh, I even have money. Up here. A money counter. I wonder if I get to buy stuff. Let's go. Why, hello. It's quite an interesting bunch of people we have here. Well, that one doesn't even look like a person. Looks like a awesome avatar-ish cat blue thing. Anyway, let me save. Just in case the game crashes. I don't think you can actually die or anything. Emba, Gert, and Nax. Well, before I talk to any of these people, I'm going to stare at the window. They had glass at one point, but that got broken long ago. 
It doesn't bother me. I've got nothing to work. I've got nothing worth stealing anyway. All right, let's talk to Emba. The beautiful, exotic-looking woman doesn't look like she comes from around here. Her bright eyes shine against her dark skin, and her perfume is sweet and spicy. The staff at her side suggests that she possesses some arcane knowledge, and her dress is made from a smooth, rich-looking fabric that reflects different hues as the light hits it. Exotic. Hello there. Good morning, child. I am Emba. Pleased to meet you. I'm Moira. Nice staff you got there. I recognize those. They cast a fortune. It's, oh, they cost <laughs> cast for they cost a fortune. It's rare to see them at all here. Most sorcerers can't afford them. I didn't buy this child. I created it myself. Ooh, you're an enchanter. Indeed, I am. I've never met an actual enchanter before. I'm. Ho I hope I'm not a disappointment to you. Most people expect cloaks, white hair, and plenty of wrinkles. I tried wearing a cloak once. So they always get in the way. Huh, I have to agree there. Can't see the sense in them myself. Well, if I ever need to enchant anything, I know who to come to. How did you become an enchanter? Somebody just showed me how one day, and ever since I've been studying it. It's really not that hard once you see how magic works. Well, can you teach me how to do it? It really isn't something that can be figured out by meditation or discussion. To properly grasp the nature of the enchantment, one must feel the world around them as, as it really is. To imbue a part of nature with an essence that is not naturally present in its form, you must first understand what form it originally takes. Here, let me show you. She looks at me, gazing into my eyes. I feel the world around me slow to a crawl, so lethargic is time now that even blinking is a lumbering, hefty motion. My eyes focused properly for the first time ever and allowed me to see the whole world around me as it truly is. I could see millions, no, billions of tiny particles flying, humming, bouncing all around me. The stones, the plants, the people all were made of these tiny specks. Even the air around me was full, absolutely swarming, teeming with these things. What had moments ago seemed like a relatively peaceful street was now a chaotic scene filled with motion. Even the gentle breeze against my face was now a mass of the particles relentlessly pounding against me. I followed Emba's glance to her staff and I could see that where life once flowed through the bark surrounding the wood now ran something else. Something else, something that wasn't the particles. This was magic, I knew, and it needed to be treated as a living thing. Then she looked back at me again, and the world went back to the way I was used to seeing it once more. You see? That was... No, there are no words for it. If there were, if there were words for it, someone would have written it down, and everyone would be able to know it. But there aren't, so it has to be sensed with all of your mind. I guess you're right. I really can't think of a way to describe that. Thank you. That was amazing. So, how does seeing uh, particles help with the magic? Again, child, it must be shown. Bring me a, a green stone, and I will show you. They are not uncommon around here, and I think you will be able to appreciate with this example. Okay. What brings you to this part of the city? Learning, child. Always learning. There is magic in all places, in people, in words, in thoughts. I travel to as many different places as I can, observing the magic that happens in everyday life. By doing this, my understanding of magic grows daily. Alright, farewell, Emba. Be safe, child. Alright, let's talk to Gert. How you doing up there, cat person thing? Hello there. What are you doing up there? I'm thinking, aren't I? I... I don't know. Thinking? I... thinking. I'm an assassin, lass, and being an assassin is hard. 
Making a name for yourself is pretty darn difficult when you're not really supposed to advertise. <laughs> That's true, I never thought about that. On the one hand, a good assassin always keeps his cover intact, you see. On the other, if nobody knows who I am, then how am I to build myself how am I to build a reputation for myself? Yes, I see your point. Why tell me that you're an assassin? Surely it's dangerous handing such information out if you're trying to preserve your identity. Aye, but I can tell you're an assassin like me, lass. Ha! <laughs> me an assassin? I'm a mercenary, I'm sorry to say. Not fancy enough to be an assassin, I'm just a regular soldier who will fight for coins. Eh, I was close. In any case, I could tell you're in the same game. Fair enough. You need a motif, or motif? Is it pronounced motif? I'm not sure. You need a, however you pronounce that thing. A motif? Sure, a recurring theme, a sort of signature you leave upon a corpse. And that way, people will recognize you from this, and you never need to reveal an actual identity. Interesting idea. What do you suggest? Well, it can be anything. Anything specific? Not really, but I'm sure there's plenty of things you could use. Well, let me know if you think of anything. Okay, I guess I have to actually come up with a motif for him to use. Farewell. I forgot to right-click on him. The feline creature of this man betrays his origin as a... Tasse? Tassi? I'm gonna go with Tasse. His clothing is practical and looks well-made and probably wasn't cheap. He sits quite comfortably on his elevated perch, coolly surveying the street around him with a casual air. Considering how rare it is to see a Tasse here in Kamiya, he looks quite comfortably at home. Alright, last person here, Nax. This man wears the bright red robes of some order I don't recognize, and has mysterious markings on his forehead. From his belt dangles a small vial filled with the same creatures that fill the lights of buildings, effectively a torch for when the street goes dark. Grows dark. Hmm. Well, I wonder if he needs any... I wonder if he needs a jar of bioluminescent feeding powder, or whatever it is. Or maybe it comes in flakes? Or maybe it's a paste? I don't know. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. As I address the man, his face turns from its bored expression into a bemused smile, eyes crinkling up at the edges and twinkling with some secret joke. Hmm? Oh, I can guess from just looking at you that you're a whore desperate for a client. What the fuck? Allow me to save you the embarrassment of having to ask by stating that I've never... I'd never be interested in the service of such an unattractive wench as yourself. What the fuck? Um... Okay. That makes quite an impression on me. What a cheerful chap. I beg your pardon. The twinkle in his eyes dies down a bit. His expression regains some of the boredness it had earlier. You heard me, wench. Or are you stupid as well as loose? Fuck you. Ignore the man and turn away from him. Talk to the hand. What the hell is going on here? It... What the hell is she doing? It... Why... Why is there a head on a pole? Okay, there's a lot to figure out in this scene. <laughs> Let's... What the hell are those things moving? Let's start here. Uh, fruit? A single vegetable has fallen on the ground. Before long, hungry animals will have cleaned this up. The marketplace is home to many different scavengers, all looking to feed on some scraps. I don't want to touch that. Stall. This is a fairly sturdy stall compared to most. A lot of them are merely a canvas for... Uh, a canvas top and a rickety desk. A setup, a setup perfect for traveling merchants who move from town to town each day. A stall this well built is harder to pack up, and these merchants may stay at the same market for months or even years. 
Okay, a Bansa or Banse or something like that. Is that the head or is that these things or is it both? What are those? Bansa is, for want of a better word, a head on a stick with two hands. The empowerment of priests led to a lot of strange happenings, but there are few as strange as this. Wait, with two hands? Are, are you telling me those are hands? Uh, just, like, separate? On the desk? What? Somehow she seems to have treated this as a minor inconvenience instead of a major inhibition, and still manages to run a market stall quite successfully. C like, can I talk to it? Is it al alive? Okay, morning, Bants. Hello there, Moira. How can I help you today, love? I'm talking to a head on a pole. Okay. So let's just move past that and just have a normal conversation. With a head on a pole. What happened to your body? Surely you weren't born just a head and two hands. You happened to it, love. You took out a merc contract to kill me long before we'd met. What? I... I did? I was in a much shadier business th those days, and somebody decided it was time to settle debts. The contract specified that my head and hands were to be severed from my body and delivered as proof. Of course, I'd bought a protection policy from one of the temples, ensuring I'd be resurrected in the case of my death. Pity the rest of my body burned in the fire you left it in. Oh, that's... I'm sorry. Oh, don't worry about it, love. You weren't to know. And you should have seen the fellow's face when you delivered me, and I came back to life and bit him. <laughs> what? That still gets me chuckling now. What happened then? I hired you right there to take him out, which you did in a very professional manner. Got myself mounted on this pole and started this business. Figured it was time to get out of the shady stuff before it killed me again and moved on to something simpler. No stopping even for death, or the loss of, or the loss of most of your body. I'm too busy to worry about any of that stuff now, love. I've got my hands full these days, <laughs> and not just because I don't have pockets anymore. <laughs> okay. It's an interesting place, Camilla. What do you sell here? I'm a trader in the arcane. I'll buy or sell just about anything enchanted. Ooh, you don't say. Well, I happen to know an enchanter. You ought to know this by now. I bought a whole slew of magical trinkets you've brought back in the past. Of course, you probably don't remember much of that, but you've only got yourself to blame for that. You buy magical trinkets? Mostly, yeah. I can usually resell them pretty easily. And there's no shortage of mercs and adventurers like yourself who bring things back from their exploits to trade. I just realized, it's actually a clever game mechanic. Let me just think about this for a second. Okay, so a really popular, like, trope and cliche in games and even movies and stuff is the person with amnesia. Because by doing that, you make it so that the character is in the same position as the viewer. That is, they don't know anything about the world. So everything needs to be explained to the character that has amnesia and thus is explained to the audience. So it's kind of a really easy crutch. And that's kind of what's going on here, but it's got a clever twist to it, because it's not someone that just has amnesia for some mysterious reason. It's someone who's drunk, drunken, or drunken, I don't know the right tense of that. It's someone who has consumed alcohol to the point where her memory is just completely fucked. And so it kind of puts her in the same position as someone with amnesia. And thus things need to be explained to her, and thus to the player. Which is actually a clever twist on the typical amnesia thing. I like it. It's fresh enough that it doesn't make me roll my eyes. So anyway, back to the game. How do I know if something is enchanted? It can be hard to know sometimes. If you're ever in doubt, ask a sorcerer, but most enchanted things feel enchanted. When you hold something and your skin prickles, it's most likely got some magic hidden away inside. Okay. Why specialize in enchanted things? You try living as a head and two hands without the aid of magic, love. Life as a head on a pole is a damn lot easier when the pole is enchanted, let me tell you. <laughs> okay, how is the pole enchanted? What does it do for you? 
That makes sense. More sense than rolling around everywhere moaning about the good old days when you had feet and getting filth from the street all over your face. True. <laughs> Do you have anything for sale? Not today, love. A crew of adventurers just passed through this morning and bought all of my stock. That means I'm buying, though, so if you've anything magical you want to sell, let me know. Alright, farewell, Bants or Bansé, or however you pronounce that name. See you later. Nickel bar to graveyard. Okay, so I guess the mortuary would probably be in the graveyard. Alright, what have we got around here? Got her up in the tree, and we've got the tree. It's got a glowing energy symbol, and we have this Krathor person who looks magical. Tree. In the months of spring and summer, these are beautiful shady trees. When the leaves fall off, as they have now, they're often collected to be used as wrappers for the various cigarettes that get made in these parts. Hmm. Looks like somebody already claimed this tree. Wait, you, you can claim a tree? I guess that's what the glowing energy symbol is. A strange energy that seems to be coming from inside the tree. I can see little particles within it, just like the ones Emba showed me. Hmm. Market stall, market stall, looks like this stall. The smell of cooking food and exotic things being smoked fill the air and gives the market a distinctive odor. There's few people about now, but the stalls will be busy by midday. Oh, whoops, I just clicked out of the game. You can buy almost anything here, provided you're willing to search through the various stalls for the one you want. On days when there are many traders who have set up a stall, the marketplace can become quite a real labyrinth. Why did I say quite a real labyrinth when the word quite wasn't even in here? I don't know. It's one of the greatest mysteries, even greater than the fact that there's a head on a pole with hands. Nickel bar, what is that? The nickel bar, the drinks are cheap, the ones I buy anyway, and the people are all pretty good company. I've tried drinking at quieter joints, and they always seem so melancholy. The rowdiness of the nickel always cheers me up, and so it is my main watering hole around here. Alright, well, no point in going in there, because I don't have any money. Let's talk to Krathor. Actually, let's look at him first. This man is heavily disguised, with a stern expression on his face. It's a wonder he isn't sweltering in, the, in his robes, but it's not uncommon to see people for whom privacy is more important than comfort. Hello there. Go away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fuck you too. I just wanted to ask if you needed any help. And I'm just asking you to leave me alone. Go away. Oh, really? Have you got a problem? Yes, I do. Someone keeps talking to me even though I've asked them to go away. Can't think of anything more irritating than that. Can you? No need to be surly, princess. I get the message. Now, I just need to hit him over the head with this bottle. Want this? I guess not. <laughs> okay. Alright, what the hell is Rhea doing up in a tree, staring at something with a spyglass? The woman in this tree peers through her telescope around the city, looking all over the place and murmuring quietly to herself. Her short hair and simple outfit portray her as one of the poorer classes. No lady of refinement would ever be seen in public like this, but it wasn't an uncommon style for the working class to adopt. Really, that's low working class? I thought it looked like a warrior princess sort of thing. Actually, looks pretty neat. Anyway, what are you doing up there, Rhea? Hey there. Hi. What are you doing up there? I like to look around the city, see what's going on. Usually I do it from the top of a building, but I thought I'd try up here today. It's not as good a vantage point as I had hoped, but I can still see a bit. Well, that's an interesting pastime. Why look around the city, though? You'd be surprised at who will pay for good information, Shorty. Shorty? What the hell? I'm not short. I can make a decent bit of coin reporting things to various people. Oh. Some people like to know what is going on, I guess. Do you, do you really see that much up there, though? Okay. If you say so. What can you see? 
In a crack around the edge of the ritual circle is the square. Something shiny. Around the edge of the ritual circle in the square. Something shiny. What's the ritual circle in the square? Huh, maybe I'll come across it. Need anything? Yeah, somebody just left a bag of something over by a grave in the graveyard. Ooh. It looks like a drop-off or something suspicious. You want to check it out? I guess I could go take a look. If it's anything of interest, I'll make it worth your while. Okay, see you later. Har har. Oh, <laughs> I just got it. See you later. Okay, funny. Alright, is that everything? To graveyard. I think that's everything. I guess I could try to go in the nickel bar. I don't have any money, but there might be someone to talk to. The city graveyard looms over the marketplace on a mound that has been built up over the year, uh, over the years, over the graves of the past. I can find a lot of the names of these tombstones in my journal. Some names that I was hired to deal with, others that were listed as fellow members of old mercenary companies. There's a lot of my, there's a lot of my past hanging around this graveyard. I just can't remember any of it. All right, let's try to go in the nickel bar in just a second. But before that, I will be right back. Okay, let's go into the nickel bar. It's too early, the nickel bar isn't open yet. Okay, never mind. Let's go to the graveyard. What the hell? This is a very strange place. He It's like it's like he have It's like he has an emoticon mask. <laughs> it's like an emoticon mask. Maybe there are a bunch of people that are incapable of expressing emotions on their face, so they have to use a mask? I don't know, it makes me think of, um... It's been a long time since I played Mass Effect, but isn't there a race of things in the Mass Effect universe that are, like, incapable of expressing emotion? So they have to say what emotion they're expressing? I remember something like that. I have no idea what they were called. They had, like, weird, booming kind of voices. Kind of reminds me of that. Or makes me think of that anyway. I don't know what he's actually like. We'll find out when I talk to him. Ult Zile. Oh, that's the mortuary. That is a very small building. Looks like it's big enough for one body. Two heads. Who has two heads? Wait, does he not have a head under his cap? Are those his heads? We're about to find out. Well, there's the bag that Rhea spotted. Should I grab it? I mean, everyone's kind of watching. That's the bag Rhea told me about. What the hell? Let's, let's try. Uh... Okay, no, actually, I'm going to talk to everyone first and then maybe do that after. L let me gather some information. It doesn't hurt to leave it there for now. Oops. Statue. Spooky. I like it. It's too high for me to reach. Mortuary. Oh, can't look at that. Light. Looks like somebody forgot to feed the light. Ooh, you don't say. I have something for that. Oh, it's a stick. Huh. There aren't any trees nearby. <laughs> I wonder how that got there. That's true. Why the hell is there a stick if there's no trees? Hmm. People should keep this place a bit tidier, really. Well, I mean, to be fair, this place looks pristine aside from the one stick, so I'd say they're doing a pretty good job. Nothing special about this. It's a small stick covered in bark. Alright, let's talk to Ult. This man looks the very archetype of a traveler. All his clothing and personal effects appear to be designed for traveling in all conditions. He's examining the building very carefully in minute detail, murmuring to himself as he does. Currently, he seems fascinated by the light and trying to figure out how it works. Hmm. He's trying to figure out how it works, so maybe, since he's a traveler, maybe these bioluminescent lights are not commonplace in the world, so he doesn't know how they work? Well, let's talk to him and clear that up. Hello there. Good morning. How wondrous it is to meet a friendly face in this place. What are you doing here? I'm a traveler, here to learn the wonders of this lovely city. Kamiya is such a beautiful city, really. 
And there's so many amazingly curious things here. I really adore the wonders that can be found. But really, I'm a messenger from afar. A bringer of important information. A deliverer of wisdom. But not only a teller, the one who speaks while others listen, I'm here to listen, and I have something I would hear from you if you could tell. <laughs> I ask not only that you listen to me, but that you tell me something so that I might listen to you. Indeed, I am here as both he who listens and he who is listened to. <laughs> you know where he reminds me of? He reminds me of uh, Brother Longfoot. <laughs> it's from a book series that I'm reading right now. Uh, what's the name of the book series? Hold on, let me check my Kindle. It's, ex it's an exceptional fantasy series. It was recommended by uh, George R. R. Martin. And let's just say he has good taste in books. Um... Before they are... Oh, it's uh, The First Law? I think it's the First Law series. Yeah. But anyway, the first book is called The Blade Itself, The First Law, or something like that. It's by Joe Abercrombie. Highly recommended. Anyway. Um... Well, he just asked me about if there's something uh, I would tell him, so let's just do that first. What would you like to be told? This building interests me. I know so little about it, it interests me very much. Why this particular building? Well, you see, the wondrous thing about the structure is that everybody must come here. While there are places in Kamiya that a person may never visit, no matter how pleasant or popular, sooner or later one passes through here. That is true. Well, I mean, everyone who dies in the area would have to pass through here. But yeah, it is thus the most popular building in the city, and yet one so neglected by all as to be almost non-existent in the consciousness of the public. That's, that's actually an interesting way to see it. This truly is a shame, and I would seek to learn as much of its secrets as I may be allowed. Please, if you know anything or learn anything of this place, share the knowledge with me. Alright, fair enough. So, what message do you bring? Only this, that the past is important. That things happen in cycles and patterns, and that if you forget who you've been, uh, who you've been, then you might forget who you think you are supposed to be. Whoops, clicked out of the game again. Listen to the people around you, learn about the people who came before you, and why these walls and streets were built. We're all exactly the same in that none of us are quite like any of the others, and learning about all these differences helps us learn who we are. Do not, I beg you, close yourself off from those around you. Even those here who lay long dead have much to teach us about ourselves. Hmm. Where are you from? I'm from a place that's so far away that even I do not know where it is. What it is now? nor what it was when I was there. I remember sand, pure white sand, with stones smooth and round, and hot nestled within it like eggs in a nest. I remember trees, tall, dark trees, surrounded with the leaves around their feet like a blanket of old memories. I remember the sea, blue-green water, rolling and swelling, so salty it stings the eyes to tears, and yet so glassy and clear that they're tears of joy at seeing such wonders. I remember caves, deep, dark caves, lit only by lamp and candle and torch, where no sun has ever seen, and yet many suns have been. I remember mountains, the crunch of snow under my feet, leaving footprints, though I had no right to spoil her beauty with my ugly feet. And I remember the city, the pathways, and streets, the buildings, and this graveyard, and this mortuary. I am from here as much as I am from anywhere else, for I am not from any place more than another. I have no home, and therefore this is my home, but ne next week my home may be a jungle, or a swamp, or a tiny pond in the middle of a field. Well, I don't think I've asked him what he's doing here, but he's kind of already told me, but let me do it anyway. I'm a traveler here to learn... Okay, yeah, I've already... Yep. Already did that. Okay. Farewell, I will bring you information when I have it. May your travels be wondrous. Alright, well let me see if I can light this up. Let's feed these little fellas. Oh, amazing! Fantastic! Brilliant! 
You know, that's really the most wondrous thing I've ever seen. You really are a wonder, you know? I really appreciate the help. I really had no idea what I was doing. Look here, please. Take this. You really have helped me out. I'd been lost without your assist... I'd, I'd have been lost without your assistance. What did you give me? Oh, coppers. Sweet, I actually have some money. Okay. I can either talk to the emoticon face mask person or two heads. Let's talk to two heads. Well, let's look at him first. This man has no head on top, merely a hat sitting atop the neck. He has, however, a head in each hand, neither of which look particularly pleased. The body is entirely covered in clothing. It is impossible to see any of the skin of the body underneath. Hi. Excuse me, may I ask what you're doing out here? I'll tell you. No, I'll tell her. We're trying to settle this once and for all. Settle this? Yes, this petty argument over who has a body and who does not. You seem to be sharing one at the moment. Yes, but it only belongs to one of us. Therefore, we came to the graveyard in an effort to find out which one of us is buried here. <laughs> okay. Once we find a grave with one of our names on it, we will know who the living body belongs to once and for all. Okay, why does it even matter, though? Wait a minute, yeah, why don't you just look at the color of the skin? One of you is, like, yellow or green and the other's blue. With it all covered up in clothing, there's no wonder you can't tell who it belongs to. The answer is simple enough. Find whether the skin is green or blue and you will know who the body belongs to. A fine idea, miss, and I will reward your initiative, uh, initiative with a copper coin when you check this and find it to be blue. You don't know that. Come now, it's a simple truth, as we will soon find it out. Uh, soon find out. I roll up the sleeve of the coat to reveal a dark brown arm. I check further up the arm and still no sign of blue or green skin. <laughs> so it belongs to neither. It's apparent that this body belongs to neither of the heads it is carting around. Okay. Well, I'm not gonna lie to them. The skin is brown. What? But that means... It seems that the body belongs to neither of you. Oh dear. This is an even bigger mi mix-up than I thought. I guess we have to go back to the temple temple and speak with the priests again. Thank you for your help, and sorry to have bothered you. If you don't mind, we'll take our leave of you now. This is even worse than we thought. Alright, good luck with that. Hopefully I helped them. <laughs> I don't know. This unhealthy looking man wears a cheap tattered robe that has been torn and patched many times and is covering his face with a mask. His matted hair and discolored skin make him look like he just crawled out of one of the graves. <laughs> Maybe he did. Hello there. What can I help you with? What's with the mask? You see my hands? Yeah, looks like they've seen better days. You have some skin disease or something? No, I died, and it was a fair while before I was brought back to life. Oh... So he's partially decomposed. The old body didn't hold up so well in the time I was gone. And the mask? You really want to see my face? Do you have any idea how quickly eyeballs decompose? Ugh. Okay, fair enough. Fair point. Nice mask. Indeed it is. So you're a zombie? <laughs> I'm a tour guide. But a zombie tour guide? I don't crave brains or lurch. Do your limbs sometimes fall off and need to be reattached? By the gods, don't even get me started on that. You have any idea how embarrassing that can be? I can imagine. Let's just say that I can afford... Until I can afford a new body, it's a constant hazard of life. Afford a new body. Wow, so... So there's people that can just switch consciousness from one body to another. You can just buy a new body. You can live in heads. You can live as a head on a pole. 
You can buy a cushy afterlife? This is a very interesting world that I'm in. Uh, I need to check in the mortuary. Mortuary tours are five copper. Coppers. Children under three get in for free. I don't want a tour, I just need to check if a body is inside. Nevertheless, the fee is five coppers, unless you're a child below age three. <laughs> I am less than three years old. Well, his eyeballs have decomposed. Maybe his sight isn't too good? <laughs> um, what is this? Afford a new body. Afford a new body? Yeah, if I get lucky enough to save up enough and we get a fresh enough corpsey, I can buy the body off the family of the deceased and get the priests to put me inside it. Is that expensive? Let's just say mortuary tours used to be one copper. Ah. Well, I am less than three years old. Can't you tell because of my voice? You don't look to be under three years old. My growth spurt happened early. But I've seen you drinking in the nickel bar many times. I have an understanding with the owner. Wait a minute. You're that mercenary. I know you. There's no way you're that young. Well, it was worth a shot. Okay, so I need five copper. Where do you recognize me from? Are you kidding? You know how many of the people that have passed through here have done so because of you? I don't really remember much of it. But let's just say you've been very good for business in the past. So because of this, you'll make an exception and allow me in the mortuary for free? Sorry, can't do that. Why not? Because I like money, and this is my job, and if I don't charge you to enter the mortuary, then I am not doing my job, and then I won't make money. Fair enough. And to you. Huh, let me save again. Alright, so I need three copper to go inside. Alright, well no one mentioned the bag, so I guess I'm just going to take it. But let me take a look at the tombstone first. The Circle of the Unending, a common symbol for many religious factions. Alright, what the hell, let's take it. I hope I'm not, like, looting a grave. She said it was a drop-off, right? Inside the bag, there's a large quantity of purple leaves and a folded-up note. Hmm. Read the note. The note says, Here's the brew leaf you wanted. Price has changed, so here's a little back. See you next week. T. There's a cop copper coin folded up inside it. <laughs> hmm. Well. I mean, is this like drugs or something? Or is this just a gift? Like, is this something shady? Or what? Examine the leaves. Large purple leaves folded into small triangles with a slightly spicy odor. Let's leave it for now. Let's see if I have anything new to talk to Ult about. How wondrous it is to meet a friendly face in this place. What would you like to be told? Um, is there anything... new I can tell him? I don't think so, no. Okay. Well, I think I'm going to have to take what's in the bag, unless there's something else I can do, but I'm pretty sure there isn't. But let me look around. Oria! I went and looked into that bag. Great, what did you find? There was a note inside that talked about something called brew leaf and a bunch of folded up leaves. What were the leaves like? They were large and purple, folded up neatly, and they smelled quite spicy. I've never heard of these before. Thanks. You've been very helpful. Here, take these for your efforts. How many? Sweet! I have enough to go inside the mortuary. Cool. Okay, I guess let's go. I want to go into the mortuary. Here you go. 
Splendid, thank you. Enjoy your tour of the fetid horror that the human body can become after life. Well, when you put it like that... Hard not to when you wake up with his body every morning. And nothing more for now. Farewell. And to you. Hi. Hello there. May I see your ticket? Certainly. Here you go. Thank you. I will keep this. You will not need it further. I will remember that you have paid. Surely Zyle could simply have stuck his head through the door and told you that I'd paid? Oh no, Zyle likes to do everything very officially, very conscientious about that sort of thing, our Zyle. Well, fair enough. Thanks for visiting the Kamiya Mortuary. I have the sinking feeling that I'm pronouncing everything wrong. Kamiya. Kamiya. Kamiya, Kamiya. Kamiya sounds better. Del. Well, at least I don't think I can pronounce that. Uh, mispronounce that. Del. It's either that or de hell. <laughs> it's either Del or de hell. It's probably Del. Alright. Well, we've got two corpses here. A lot of stuff. Bucket. Tables. Look at the table. Various tools and fluids for the preservation of corpses. Embalming fluid and bandages, more of the same, is probably kept in the drawers. Can we take a look inside? None of this stuff really interests me. It's all for preserving corpses. Whoops. A uh, chart. It's a chart of the human body with various notes handwritten on it. In the first circle of energy, we have the brain. In the second, the heart. In the third, we have the reproductive organs. These work as a symbiotic entity. Without the brain, the heart and the genitals do not know how to work. Without the heart, the brain and genitals do not get the blood they require. Without the genitals, the heart and brain would never have been created. It also has a diagram of the human body with various notes. Hmm. Anything else on the table? Nope. Bucket. Ugh, whatever it is in there was once inside a human. Lovely to think that I have the exact same squishy things inside my body. Indeed. Disturbing thought. I am not getting anything out of the bucket. Are you sure? Okay, fair enough. Shelves, embalming fluid, a nasty looking hooked implement, and a nasty looking hooked implement. I'm not sure what it is used to pull out, but I bet it makes a mess. Hmm, none of this stuff really interests me. Alright, let's just take a look at the bodies. Corpse. Jerhal, that bastard deserves worse than this. Alright, so what is this one? I didn't know this guy. Hope for his sake that he wasn't this ugly when he was alive. <laughs> Probably not. They look pretty badly decomposed. Alright, slab. I wonder how many corpses this stone slab has held. Judging from the various stains on it, this is not the first. Okay, so where would the money be? Let me talk to Dell. Hello there. Welcome to the Cameo Mortuary. Are you a mortician? Oh yes, I most certainly am. That would explain me being in the mortuary, of course. G yeah, okay, fine. In fact, I am Dell, the city's speculative mortician. What's a speculative mortician? It is my greatest pleasure to make your acquaintance. Most people don't bother coming in here to visit until they're a corpse, at which point they're rarely they're rarely friendly. Except Deer Zile, of course, but he is a rare blessing to us. Are there other morticians? Oh yes, but they work in the more conventional manners. I am more interested in how someone thinks than how they decay. I have studied how thoughts are formed for years, and now apply this logic to potential reanimated corpses. Oh, you're practicing zombification. Speculative mortician? Oh, absolutely. While most morticians care about the corpse in the present, that is, preparing it for burial, I deal with each corpse's potential future. A corpse's future? Absolutely. You never know when the dead will decide they've had enough of being dead and rise up again. Um... Okay. To prepare them for the confusing transition between death and unlife, I like to make sure each corpse has a few things in readiness. 
I like to tattoo a few little hints onto their skin. Nothing too long, just a rough breakdown of what's happened and good places to start one's new life. A small matchbook so one can see the can see to break free of their coffin, and a small trowel to aid in this task. <laughs> so he gives them an, an escape kit. Also a small book of prayers to Our Lady Excel. To give hope and a roll of strong mints to conquer the embarrassment of asking for assistance with death breath. <laughs> I don't think mints will be enough. A book of prayers. Oh yes, if one can save enough money, then their soul can be moved into the corpse of a fresh cadaver. Should the priests of Ixal deem these circumstances appropriate? Our, deal, our dear Zyle is saving up for such an opportunity himself. Bless him. Oh my god, there's a lot of questions. And I've, I have such poor breath control and I've been reading so much that I'm getting lightheaded. Must take a breath. Hold on a second. Okay. Do many corpses rise from the dead? It's a small but considerable percentage. Too few to be a major issue, but too many for it to be completely overlooked. Zombies can buy a new body. Now, zombies is really such an ugly term. It conjures up images of lurching, groaning corpses, when really people who return to their bodies have all the cognitive presence as you or I. But yes, should they be displeased with the decayed body they inhabit, the priests of Exal can grant them transfer to a newer, fresher cadaver. What a strange transition that must be. Oh indeed, but better than walking around being judged for one's decayed flesh, I suppose. Undoubtedly. Doesn't all this cause mix-ups? How do you mean? Well, if somebody died, if somebody if somebody who dies can come back to life, and somebody else has been moved into their body, what happens then? Oh no no no, this could never possibly happen. Except in the unfortunate case of Mrs. Floria Fetterworth, but that was an honest mistake. You see, if one can afford these, uh, those two gold coins for the ferryman of the sticks, then their soul is assured safe transit into the afterlife. These individuals will never return to their bodies, and the priests are careful to make this distinction. Ah, of course, I should have thought of that. How are thoughts formed? In three separate places. The brain, which tells us the most logical thing to do in a situation. You can feel the brain hurting when it is overworked, something we all know. Then there's the heart, which tells us the right thing to do in any situation. When something is wrong, our heart flutters, beats faster, and even aches. And lastly, there are the reproductive organs, which tell us the most enjoyable thing to do in any situation. One hardly needs to be informed of the way these react when the prospect of something fun appears. <laughs> All of these work in a symbiotic manner, debating constantly in order to inform our decisions. The brain thinks of the future, and what will bring us the most benefit. The heart thinks of the past and the good and bad memories that makes us who we are. And the genitals think of the present and what would feel best right now. Through a combination of the impulses we are given from these three elements, we form the basis of every decision we ever make. What taught you all? Who taught you all this? Oh no, these are all my own theories. I find most other notions of what makes us this far too implausible... Uh, yeah, far too implausible to believe for even a second. I have seen many tens of thousands of corpses, and not once have I encountered a single homunculus I'll have you know. I rarely interpret what I feel as a living being and find within the bodies of the dead. Theories that, really, that rely on belief beyond this do not interest me. Oh, I sorry, I think I said I barely... I merely interpret what I feel as... yeah. Anyway. I'm looking for the corpse of Jerhal. The names of these corpses are rarely known to me. When did this Jerhal die? Very recently, I should think, I was visited by his spirit this morning. Then he might be this fellow who came in last night. Uh, that'll be him over there on the closest slab. Thank you. Farewell for now. See you again. Whether alive or dead. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at this body in just a second. Okay. Alright, you slimy bastard. Time to pay what's due. Wait. There are no coins over his eyes. Was he lying? I knew you would try it, Moira. God damn it. Jerhal, where are the coins? 
You think I would leave myself vulnerable to such an obvious problem? I took them with me, not just the spiritual concept of them, as most do, but the actual physical coins themselves as well. It's not easy to find out how, but I had somebody to distract the people looking for me just long enough that I could learn the secret. I really couldn't have done all this without you, Moira, and I am truly sorry I can't pay you for your work. All this time you were using me? You were useful, and I needed the help. The depths of your dishonesty have no limits, do they? This is all in the past now. You should move on, Moira. Sorry, but I've never been very good at moving on. It's strange that somebody would plan the arrangement of his own death so carefully when a simple resurrection charm can be purchased from the Temple of Ixal for a few coppers. Wait, you can get a, a resurrection charm for a few coppers? Damn, that is cheap. They're good for a day before they expire, and so very affordable that one... Wait, so very affordable that one expecting death can quite easily purchase a new one every day as insurance against his own demise. Resurrection charm? Certainly, a simple token that travels with one into the afterlife, with enough power to bring the soul instantly back into the body if used within a day of being purchased. As long as your spirit doesn't make it across the sticks, one can return to this plane of existence simply enough. If Drahal died in the night, what are my chances of catching him before he crossed the Styx? It is said that the ferryman comes at sundown. If you were to die before nightfall, you would surely encounter him on the banks of the river. So if I understand you correctly, I could purchase one of these charms, kill myself, find him on the shores of the Styx, take my damn gold coins off him, use a resurrection charm, and be zapped back to life. And this would work? Well, it's highly unconventional. Think about it. It's foolproof. I must say that if you did such a thing, I would advise against killing yourself with injury. Even if you come back to life, a stab wound or other serious damage to the body could have serious permanent effects. I suggest taking a poison and in a liquid form so that it can be easily passed from the body once you return. Right, yes, good point. So I get a charm, find some poison, drink the poison, die, take my gold coins, use the charm, wake up, piss the poison back out, and I'm, and I'm as good as new. Sound like a good plan? Well, as long as you do all this before nightfall, I cannot see how it wouldn't work. Dell, you are a genius. Remind me to buy you a drink if I see you in the nickel bar sometime. I'm getting paid one way or another. Holy shit, the lengths she will go to to get her money. Wow. The hell? Who are you? Have you ever seen such a desperate plan, my dearest Dell? Well, my lady, her logic is sound. Oh, indeed. It is, in fact, perfect logic, but only somebody who is truly desperate would obey their logic and ignore their heart so willingly. It is as you say. Do you know who she is, Dell? I do not, my lady. No, and neither does she. I know who she is, though, Dell. I have been looking for her. I should say you know who everybody is, my lady. Oh, indeed, but this one is special, and has proven so hard to find. Do you have a plan, then? I do. I may have to intervene, dearest Dell. I thought you promised to stay out of the affairs of the mortal races of the Great Withdrawal. We promised to not meddle with your minds and souls. We never promised to stay our hands from tampering with the body. I see. I am sure your judgment is perfect as always, my lady. Your faith is always inspiring, dearest Dell. Some of us still remember. Yes, you do. So few, th so few though. I must leave now. Take care, won't you? Of course, my lady. Oh, and Dell, would you do something for me? How may I serve you? Call me Ixal, would you? I remind you of this every time we speak. That's Ixal? Oh. Okay then. Yes, my lady. <laughs>